Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astri Krasnici. I'm a CCNA and CCNP certified instructor. Today I will do a demonstration on the skills integration challenge and this is a packet tracer activity 2.3.1.2. Okay, so if I just open my packet tracer files so and this show and these are my source files, so skills integration challenge. Okay, now that it's open, I close this user profile, cancel this. Now, this is my challenge. I've got a switch and two PCs. So if I click on the activity, packet tracer activity, uh, let me expand this a little bit. Right. Now, it says here, the network administrator asks you to configure a new switch. In this activity, you will, list a uh, you will use a list of requirements to configure a new switch with initial settings then we configure SSH and port security. So configure this S1 with the following initial settings. So if I go to click an S1, right, go to CLI. Let me just expand a little bit so we can see it nicely. That's fine there. Okay. So first thing that we need to do is we need to configure the host name. Host name is obviously it says here S1. So we go to the switch. We are in user mode, so we type enable. Now we are in privilege mode, so we type configure terminal. Okay, we are in global configuration mode. So we have to configure the ho host name to be S1. So host name S1. And as you can see there, the change from switch default name to S1 now. Okay, that's done. Good, we got three points. Banner that includes the words warning. Right, so we have to configure a banner that includes at least the word warning. So we say banner, message of the day, and we have to start the banner with something. So let me start it with, uh, I don't know, dollar, dollar sign. So warning, uh, then uh, authorize users only. Only. Okay, and I have to finish it with the same. Uh, uh, same symbol that I started with, or same letter, whatever you started with, you have to finish it with. Now, what do we use a banner for? Banner, we use it for, uh, for example, we have to warn everybody that comes from outside or inside, connects to our switches, that we say that we are monitoring these switches, and if you're not authorized to walk to actually access this switch, we will prosecute you. Do not ever use word welcome on your banner, because then if you use the word welcome, you cannot prosecute the uh, hacker, for example. Okay, press enter. We've done that. So now the next one: console port login and pass um, console port login and password Cisco. So we have to go to the console port line console zero and type password Cisco. Excellent. And then we have to say login. So we're going to use this password when somebody is trying to log into the console port. Encrypt. Enable password of class. So we have to type an encrypted password for enable. So every any time. So if I go to disable, I'm in the user mode at the moment. So if I want to go to privilege mode, user mode is user. Not much you can do in this mode. So if you want to go move on to privilege mode, you have to type enable. As you can see, I'm not challenged with any password. So that's why we have to configure one password. So configure terminal configure terminal okay so I'll say enable secret class right as it says there encrypt enable password encrypted version the secret is encrypted all right there's another password that I can say enable uh, password class but this is not encrypted this is in clear text so we have to it says encrypted version so secret class okay I think we are moving on. Yep, that's where we're going forward. Then encrypt plain text password. Any other password like this one is not encrypted by default. So we have to go and encrypt it. We have to enable the service by saying service password encryption. Encryption. We enable that, spot, that encryption. So all these passwords that are not encrypted by default, they will be encrypted. Not this one. This password is encrypted anyway, so we don't need to do anything for that password. This is management interface addressing. So the address is in VLAN 1, 10, 10, 10, 2 for the switch. And that's our management address. So we have to access that interface. So interface, interface, 
VLAN 1. I hope I can spell correctly. VLAN 1. Then give an IP address. IP address 10.10.10.2. And then the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. Okay. So if I say uh, 255.255.255.0. And then I have to do no shutdown. No shutdown. The interface is, it will go up. So um, if I do end here and then type show IP interface interface brief right as you can see I have fast Ethernet 0 1 and 0 2 are up so I've got PC 1 and 2 connected to it and then if I move all the way to the end I can see the VLAN 1 it's my management VLAN and it's up so I need to uh, if I want to manage this switch I'll need to tell it or SSH to this IP address next one here if you can see it says configure SSH to secure remote access with the following settings so we don't want telnet we want ssh domain name should be cisco.com all right so we go to global configuration mode configure terminal and then ip domain name it wants what's the ip domain cisco.com cisco.com excellent the next one it wants generate rsa keys pair parameters to support ssh version 2 so we it needs to we need to have SSH version 2. So IP SSH version 2. And then we create we need to create the key. So first let's create the key. So uh, crypto key generate RSA and press enter. Now it's not telling us how many bits we need for uh, modulus, but we're going to use 1024. We asked for that last time, so maybe that's correct. And then after that we have to. Uh, change SSH to version 2 so IP SSH SSH version 2 okay excellent now set uh, yep we did that so set the version to 2 uh, the, the key parameter support yep we've done that create a user admin and password CCNA so we need to create a local database by saying that uh, we have one user called admin and his password is CCNA so user name User, name, admin, and password, Cisco, or CCNA. Excellent. VTY lines to only accept SSH connection and user the local login for authentication. So we have to go to the VTY line, so line VTY 0 to 15. Now login, by default is login, the password, whatever you type in the VTY. But now we want the login local which means we are going to use a local database this username and password here login local and we want only telnet, uh, SSH not telnet so transport input SSH okay we're using SSH only as authentication uh, sorry we're only using SSH for connections and authentication local um, database configure the port security feature to restrict network access Disable all unused ports. Okay, excellent. So let's go and disable all unused ports. So if I type show IP interface brief, that's going to tell me all the ports are down. See, look, all the ports from 3 all the way to the end to 24 are down. And then gigabit 01 and gigabit 02 is down as well. So I can disable all those ports. Configure terminal. I'll do that with range. So interface, I don't have to do 101. Interface range fa03 up to 24 comma g01 or g04 slash 1 up to 2 so i'm doing all these ports and one go and i'm going to disable them so by typing shut down okay now you can see that all the ports i just changed the state to down so administratively down if i do n to go to privilege mode and type show ip interface interface brief inter face brief i think that's correct yeah, brief you can see all the ports are now it says administratively down which means that somebody has shut them down with uh, administrator me okay go to the end we can see all the g01s are down as well administratively down okay the next one says set the interface mode to the access mode so set the interface mode to access all right so for this i'm going to do for all my interfaces so config t interface range 
all my interfaces so 0 1 to 24 and then comma g01 to 2 okay uh, g g gi gi01 to 2 and switch for mode access right what this command does is that it's not going to send the DTP messages it's not going to send any messages so all these ports are going to be behaving as an access port so it, it for example if a device comes in uh, one of the PCs and brings like a, a pretend switch it's not going to form a, a trunking without switch without defaults without main switch so it's not going to form trunking so it's kind of like a security protection there, security enhancements okay now we have to make sure that if we connect the switch to one of these ports we move it from the access port and we make it trunk because otherwise it's not going to trunk it's not going to be trunk enable port security to allow only two hosts per port so i have to go enable the port security so i'm going to do this on the, my two up ports so interface interface range fa01 and 2 and i'll enable the port security first that was a command switch port port security Okay, that's how I enable the port security. I can keep writing it like this, you know, or I can just uh, use a uh, up arrow and repeat the old command. So, because they all start with switch for port security. Then enable port security to allow only two hosts per, uh, sorry, two hosts per port. Yeah, so maximum two. And then it says record the MAC address uh, in the running configuration okay so all the MAC addresses are going to come it's going to be sticky so MAC uh, address sticky okay and then ensure the port violation is disabled the ports which means that we want to shut down the ports if the if there's been a violation we want to shut down switch port you see that's 100 out of 100 I don't have to type this command because this is the default command anyway even if i don't type anything that's a default violation so switch port port security violation shutdown okay uh, let me spell that correct switch port port security violation shutdown okay excellent now it's a good habit to save them so Copy running config to startup config. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I well, agree with the startup config. Press enter. Now you can see the completion is 100 out of 100. We all happy. Check the results. So assessment items. We can see that we've done pretty much all. Well, we've done everything that was asked from us. We configured the banner correctly. We configure the command console lines, the login and the password. We configure that we enable the secret. We change the host name. We give it a domain name. And the port, we enable the port security. Maximum addresses we allowed. Um, to say maximum static MAC addresses. The violation and sticky was enabled. We did shut down all the ports, all the ports. And we did the same for port 2, FA02. And then further down. We configure VLAN 1 with IP address, we change the IP no shutdown state, correct subnet mask, we enable the service password encryption service. And then we configure the SSH, we configure the SSH version 2, we configure the name, a user like a local database, and then we make sure the transport input was SSH, and the login was a login local. Okay, thank you for watching my video, and I hope to see you in the next videos. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, goodbye. This has been Astrid Krasnichi helping you with this package tracer. Bye.